Hi there, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to paint some onions, and if you would like a real-time version of this tutorial, you can find it up now in Critique Club. It took me about two hours to paint, so you're going to get a time-lapse version here on YouTube. I'll put a link in the video description if you would like to go check that out. I want to send a big thanks to my friend Tracy Allen, who took a photo of some onions at a farmer's market in Florida. The photo was so gorgeous. She is so talented. I'm going to link to her Instagram page with this photo if you want to check it out. Um, and I asked her if I could paint them and show it on YouTube and she agreed. So thank you so much, Tracy. I really appreciate it. And I'm um, just starting off by sketching some circles, basically some wonky circles. That's what an onion is. It's a wonky circle. So don't get up in your head about it. Don't worry about it. Just sketch on some wonky circles. I'm using some watercolor markers. Now I'm using the Windsor and Newton. They used to be called, um, I think they're called uh, watercolor pro markers now, but they used to just be called Windsor and Newton watercolor markers. I have both the old style and the new style. They used to be made in France. Now they're made in China and they're about the same. Honestly, I can't really tell that much difference between um, the old and the new version. And um, I thought I would play with these because I bought myself a little treat. I bought, and I've wanted them for a while, but I did recently purchase the Faber-Castell um, watercolor markers, and they haven't arrived yet, but um, I was just really excited for them, so I thought I would use these for now. These Some of these are getting kind of uh, worn out and used up, but I decided to see if I could get a little extra life out of them and um, kind of get in the groove. Plus, I'll want to use the Faber-Castell once and compare. Um, so basically, after after drawing the circles, I'm kind of using the Doxazine Violet as a shadow and just kind of filling in. Now, something I want to mention with the Windsor Newton markers, and I can't speak for the Faber Castells yet because I haven't tried them, but um, as far as the Windsor Newton water based markers, they are light fast, but like say Doxazine Violet, that typically would be uh, PV23. They might, I think they used a different, maybe they used PV23. I don't remember, but like the Browns, for instance, instead of using like um, PBR7 or PR101, they're using like. Um, um, they're using a red and a blue and a black pigment. They're using pigments that have finer particle size so that they can go through the tip, the felt tips of the markers better. So you're not going to get the granulation with these markers that you would with a paint, uh, like a regular paint paint. And the pigment numbers on a lot of the colors are going to be different if they are not a finely like transparent pigment. If there's something like ultramarine blue, I don't have the ultramarine blue marker, but um, like I don't think they use PB29. They're going to be using like a mix that will give you that hue, but not have those big particle sizes. So you're not going to get granulation. They're going to behave very much like a Tombow or a real brush pen or any of those dye base markers. So all this to say is if you want to do a similar technique at home and you don't have these, uh, the light fast ones, if you have some like even Crayola markers, you can do these techniques. Um, I work on some watercolor paper with some good sizing. I'm working on arches. Having a watercolor paper that's well sized is what's going to give you that blendability and let you to dissolve the colors and all of that. So if you're working on a sketchbook, I don't think I would bother uh, splurging on the light fast markers like the Faber Castell and the Windsor Newton. Um, but if you're going to work on something that you think you might want to hang up someday in like on the wall and you don't want it to fade, then then I would splurge on the um, on the markers. That said, um, I haven't used I've used them maybe I'm, I'm trying to think how many paintings I've done with those markers, maybe like half a dozen. So not a ton. Uh, and they're not going to get you as far as like a tube of, of paint, you know. So, I mean, as far as a cost benefit analysis, I think uh, the paint is going to be a much better value. But they're kind of fun. And if you love markers like I do, then uh, then hey, give them a try, right? Uh, I know I wanted some contrast and texture. And I knew the markers were going to be very transparent, very flat. So I am using some Schmincke Super Granulating Colors. Shout out to my friend Rosie who shared her stash with me. She made me up uh, some pans of them. And uh, that's been really great for testing out the colors. And then I can like, if I use one up then I'll know that's definitely worth purchasing a tube. Um, I really like the Schmincke ones um, which is odd because Schmincke watercolors are not my favorite but I do like their super granulating colors. I think they do a really good job at that and if you're going to try any watercolors from Schmincke that would be what I would recommend because I think they really excel and that's really different than what other brands are offering. But I have to say I also like the new um, Supervision layered watercolors that come in the three packs, three tubes to a pack. They seem to have improved quite a bit from their first generation of colors. Um, as far as light fastness though, I would definitely trust Schmincke over the supervision. I'm going back and I'm going back and forth. I'll go back to the markers. I also grabbed out some watercolor crayons um, because I wanted to be, I want, uh, it's basically this picture I feel because it's such a, um, there's a lot of uh, repetition with the onions and they're actually all white onions. Um, I wanted to find contrast where I could. So really like kind of boosting colors. Um, also, 
I'm working with a contrast of flat and transparent. The markers are flat and transparent. The granulating watercolor paints are textured and transparent. Then we've got the um, watercolor crayons, which are smooth and opaque. And um, working with all those contrasts of of texture and opacity really bring a lot of interest into this very repetitive design. Um, so something I tell my students to do often is to look for the color, look for the subtleties and amp them up. Um, and that is because what it does is it teaches people to look at the ordinary in a new way and to see beauty in the ordinary. And it will train you as an artist to see beauty in the ordinary because there is beauty everywhere in our lives. There is beauty in the rock surrounded by gravel and dead grass that you're seeing right now. Look for those colors and those textures and find the beauty in it. There's beauty to be found everywhere. There's interest to be found everywhere. And doing an exercise like this where it's a pile of white onions will... Um, really teach you to see the beauty in things. And this was a beautiful photograph. What I really liked about the photograph, I think, was how you could really see the roots on the onions. And I love like bulb roots. Um, I love to draw botanicals and, and flowers. And I love it when you see those like the papery skin around a daffodil or the, um, uh, the roots on a bulb or any of that little fresh green shoots of spring, those sorts of things. And um, find those little subtleties and just, you know, accent them enough that you know, the muggles can see where the beauty is. Because I think as artists, we do see the beauty. Um, we see the beauty. And a lot of times, though, at least with me, sometimes I'll look at something and it'll catch my eye. And it'll be this little spark of creativity. But then I'll be like, well, nobody wants to paint an onion. Why should I paint an onion? You know, um, you know, because I think also we seek validation. We seek to get the approval of others, especially if we're going to share our, our work online. And a couple of weeks ago, um, the Food Paint Challenge on Instagram had a couple onions as the prompt. And um, and I was like, you know, I really like that. And I decided to paint it and I didn't film it. I was just up on my fun art desk where I tend to do my food paint challenges, I guess. And I love the way it came out. And a lot of people asked if I was going to do a tutorial on it. And I'm like, well, I'm probably not going to paint this again. But then when I saw Tracy's photo, I was like, yeah, that's perfect. I will paint that. And that will give me a little bit more agency to try a bunch of different techniques because I'll be using um, all a bigger piece of paper. This is 9 by 12 The little food paint challenge I did in like a, it's like a 5 by 5 sketchbook, I think, or 4 by 4 It's small. Um, I think it's 5 by 5 And so this would give me just a little bit more real estate and I can have some more fun. So so here I love watercolor crayons. I have a little course on watercolor crayons. If you're interested, it's um it's a medium. I don't know something about it. It just really speaks to me because it's kind of like gouache. You can almost get the look of oil paint um, in a small format. So clean and easy and just um it's just wonderful. And I, specifically the Karen Dosh watercolor crayons or the Lyra uh, watercolor crayons. Either either of those I think are really excellent. Um, so I started playing with the watercolor crayons and then I realized, oh, I brought this one up so opaque and the texture is just so different of all the other ones, what I'm gonna do because on some of the onions, I loved the granulating watercolor texture I got. So I didn't wanna cover that up. But then on others, I was like, they were just kind of like dull as a stump. And I'm like, I gotta do something to some of these other ones that are just kind of boring. Um, so I kind of struggled a bit and I think I struggled a little extra because I did narrate this as I was going along for Critique Club. And there were a few times where I'm like, oh, maybe I just need to finish one of these onions and time lapse a rest. But I'm like, oh, I don't know. I think that each onion kind of needs a little bit of a different treatment depending on how much I like the underpainting. Uh, so the whole thing's in real time over on Critique Club, all two hours of it. I mean, <laughs> you may be hitting that fast forward button. I don't know. Uh, but I think it's kind of, um, I also think it's really good to see somebody struggle and see how they get out of the struggles. I am not highfalutin and um, acting like I only do good stuff all the time. It's not true. I make mistakes all the time. And I think that when you make a mistake or you get yourself in a situation where you don't really know how you're going to get yourself out of that predicament, watching somebody fix it is really um, is really important. And I love mixed media. I think mixed media is a wonderful tool. And um, one product that worked really well for this and went really well with all the other things I was using was these um, Artex acrylic markers. And I am not a snob when it comes to art supplies. I will try anything. And if it gives me the results that I'm after, then great. Um, and these these Artex acrylic markers, this is kind of one of these things where, you know, like, do you ever wonder when a drug comes out to the market and you're like, I wonder what they were trying to invent when they came up with that, you know? Well, that's kind of what I what I think like with the Artex acrylic markers. As acrylic markers go, 
they're not good acrylic markers. They wash off. If you were to paint like, if you were to um, like paint a rock with those acrylic markers, which is something they actually advertise them for, they would wash off in the rain. They are, they're, they're more like gouache than acrylic. If you wanted to temporarily write a name on a wine glass and then be able to wipe it off with a damp cloth later, they're perfect for that. If you wanted to be able to paint on a window and wash it off later, they're perfect for that. And I also figured out they're perfect for using with your watercolors. And then if you, especially if you want to blend it out later, uh, so for me, these, these quote unquote acrylic markers by Artix are perfect. I really love them for that. Um, so, you know, sometimes, uh, a product is not as advertised, but it's perfect for something. I do want to clarify that I'm talking about the Artix black uh, barrel double-ended acrylic paint markers. Those are the ones that are like gouache. They're ones in the white barrel that are single-ended are waterproof. So I just want to be completely clear with that. And they did change the description after I uh, reviewed the product and gave them feedback on it. Uh, so one thing here um, I did with the watercolor markers, I went back in and I started to add some, like the area where the roots are going to come out of and, and kind of blend it out a bit. So I'd have a bit of a contrast background for me to put the lighter color roots on top of. So that's something that's kind of handy to do. Um, and then I'm going back in with the marker, with the acrylic markers over the watercolor. Uh, see, going in with that, with the watercolor marker, adding some darker, <clears throat> some burnt sienna, or actually that's burnt umber. It looks like burnt sienna, but it's burnt umber. Um, and then kind of spreading it out and then adding um, the lighter on top. So because of the weird pigment mix on some of the markers, like I took the uh, Burnt Umber Impression Blue and it was like green. It was like teal. It came out teal when I mixed the colors together instead of like a dark, almost like Payne's gray color. Uh, so that's just something that's a little bit weird with those markers and you may kind of get a little confused by if you're not looking at the pigment uh, numbers. The pigment numbers are printed on the barrel though, even the ones that are made in China. So um, you may look at that if you're thinking about ordering the Windsor Newton markers. I would look at the pigment numbers. Um, probably Blick should have that. They usually have all their information on pigment stuff. And then just so you know what you're getting, because if you're, um, if you're really... Um, dependent on mixing certain colors together in your custom palette, your bespoke palette that is that is your artist palette. I mean, we all have our favorite colors, right? Um, you would want, just want to know how they react. And as far as the markers, I like to use them in studio. I think they were kind of made as like a travel, like a portable art medium. I don't really like to travel with markers. I find that when I'm using markers, I need more colors than if I'm using like a, like a set of watercolor paints. I feel like I could get much more variety out of six watercolor paints than out of, you know, 30 markers. So for me, they're more of a studio medium. You may have a different um, a different working style and you might like to bring like three markers with you and call it a day. That's, you know, that's up to you. I think we're all like, we're all different in that result. Um, I tend to travel really light when I paint plein air, but, uh, but we're all different. I love that onion at the bottom. That's like uh, the second one in from the corner. That's got some yellow and some red and some teal on it. That's my favorite onion out of the whole bunch. And I just, I feel like the watercolor underpainting was almost perfect. And I just need a little bit of a smooching in, smooching, smooching in of colors to bring it just to where I wanted it to. This bin, big onion in the corner, um, gave me a little grief, I have to say, but when I was done with it, I was actually pretty happy with it because it gave me a nice place to sign my name. So, uh, so there's that. A combination that I found in this painting that I really liked was using watercolor markers with a water brush. I don't feel like I needed um, my proper brushes and buckets of water with them. So that's something also to consider uh, if you really love to use water brushes. My favorite water brushes are the Derwent uh, water brushes with the soft silicone um, button on the side to squeeze. They are a little bit more expensive, but um, but I think they're worth it. They're not, and, and more expensive, like there's so many cheap water brushes out there that are all about the same. Um, but I have to say, I really like those Durant ones. I like them much better than the Caran d'Ache ones because I find the Caran d'Ache ones after a while stop feeding out the water properly. So, but they also have that similar like push button on the side. Um, I kind of uh, went back and forth trying this little brush called a uh, wisp brush from Royal Atlantical to get the little the little streakiness on the on the um, onions. It worked all right, but I found those brushes weren't quite um, stiff enough to push around the watercolor crayon and the markers as well as I'd like them. Um, so yeah, I, I say experiment. Experiment with the different brushes you have. If you if you've got a brush in your stash and you just and you just haven't found a way to use it. Um, try it with a different medium. Maybe you bought the brush thinking you'd use it with acrylics, but it just didn't have enough oomph. Maybe it's going to work really well with watercolors. Maybe it'll work really well with inks. Um, 
and and change it. Like if you if you bought a brush for acrylics and it's like oh, I'm just not using it with the acrylics, but it works great for watercolor crayons. Just put it with your watercolor crayon stuff. Put it so that when you go to use those products, you have what you need to use them with. So you're not hunting around. I feel like the most um, if you could take away the friction of creating, you're going to create more. It's a uh, it's it's actually kind of an economic term called you know like uh, like Amazon, right? It's easy to shop at Amazon because they take the friction away. They make it easy. You can buy something with one click. You can have it, you know, shipped to your house. You can save your payment information. Everything is just so easy. They take all that friction out of the way. If you can take that friction out of the way when you're creating art, you're going to create more art. Like I will often add friction in if I'm like finding that I'm shopping too much or I'm doing like shopping on Amazon too much. I'll take my credit card off of it so I have that friction of having to enter in that information if I want to use it. And also do the opposite for your art. Make it so you have less friction when you want to go paint and uh, have everything close to hand, have everything ready to go. If you can have a, a table set up in the corner of your sp a spare bedroom or something, just so you can just sit down when the mood strikes you. That's that's the way to do it. You know, make it so it's convenient. And maybe it's not the spare bedroom. Maybe that's like too much friction. Maybe it needs to be a little uh, a little cigar box on your kitchen counter so that you can kind of sit down there with a cup of tea and get out a tiny little postcard size watercolor block and a little palette of paints and a water brush and you know that's going to be getting you to paint it whatever works you know whatever gets you putting that brush to paper is is you know good in my book there's no perfect supply for any one person you know, you've just got to go with what's going to work the best for you. Um, I have to say, I was getting very frustrated with this painting. And um, I hope that my the real time version does not sound um, negative. Because like there were times I was kind of like, there were a few times where I was like, maybe I should just start over and do something different. I don't know. I'm just, I struggled. I really struggled with this one, which seems like, why would you struggle? It's like really the same shape over and over again. Maybe I was getting bored. I'm not sure. One thing that was bothering me were the stalks. Um, I wanted to add the stalks in. Like you can see how the, like three of those onions have like stalks coming up from them because it added a little variety in the shapes and it added a little bit of breaking up all the circles, but they just look weird, like weird snakes in there. And I didn't like it. I was getting very frustrated, but I liked the green. I love that spring green color. And the onion skin will have like, and the onion flesh will have a little bit of that spring green on the vegetables themselves and I thought that was a really good tie-in but man I just was really struggling with them and making them look like they belonged instead of like I don't know like a garden hose or something was like <laughs> woven in back there I'm like ah, it was so frustrating and um but I did decide to keep on pushing because we all have those frustrating paintings we all have those moments where we're like oh my word, is this ever going to work out? Am I going to be able to pull this together? How am I going to save this? You know, there's enough good parts of this painting that I don't want to give up on it. But man, oh man, I'm so frustrated by the garden hose snake <laughs> sprouts that I have growing in these onions, in this onion patch. Um, so, you know, we, we figure out ways to deal with it. So I decided that I would scrub back and kind of negative paint almost some onions. I want them like, if I can like maybe have some shapes that are in the background that look like onions at the bottom of the pile. And because I was feeling like even though there's a lot going on here, it still felt a little sparse. It didn't feel like there was enough depth or something. So I'm like, okay, I need some ghost onions kind of in the background and um, to kind of give it a, a, a bit of more, a little more abundance. I felt like I want this to feel like abundance. I want to feel like you were looking at this like bottomless, bin of, of onions and I wanted it to feel like fresh like spring abundance farmer's market I wanted that vibe uh, I wanted the vibe of freshness and growing and growth in summer and um just yeah hey everyone I have enough onions to share come take an onion you know I just wanted to have that that feeling of of abundance and friendship and you know it was a photo of my friend took so of course I wanted to do a good job because my friend took this beautiful photo and I wanted to do it justice so I had all that, like all of those pros going for me and the cons were I was having a hard time pulling it together. So I'm like, well, if I can push, if I can bring some onions forward from the background, if I can push those stalks back and then if I can add roots over some of those stalks and overlap the onions, connect them together in this feeling of friendship and fellowship and get all of this working together then it was going to work and that's where I feel like the painting started to come together here at the end by letting those roots drape over each other letting them connect connection is a big um, vibe is a big motive for me this year it's um 
it's definitely my theme of the year. I'm, I'm trying to be better at connecting with people and, um, you know, connecting with friends and making friends and just, uh, uh, not taking things for granted. And, um, and that's a kind of a spirit that I'm putting in my work as I go as well. And, um, and I feel like I, I finally brought things together here at the end. And I really like how it came out. And the, I had so many doubts, so many doubts throughout this painting. And I want you to know that that's so normal. It's normal. Everyone has doubts when they're painting. Everybody feels, unless you're not taking any risks, if you're not taking any risk, you may feel very confident and sure of yourself the whole entire time. But if you do feel that way all the time, then I would suggest that maybe you need to take a risk. Maybe you need to try something off the wall. Try a different medium. Throw something in out of the out of left field and, and uh, really challenge yourself because I challenged myself and... I really like how this came out. So I signed my name down in the corner. Um, I did kind of uh, fuss a little bit. I decided to grab a colored pencil and just kind of like uh, maybe deepen up a few of the roots. But um, overall, that's how I finished it up. And hey, if you want to see it in real time, you can find it up now in Critique Club at lindsaywyrick.teachable.com. There's a link in the video description. You can click on that and uh, go check it out for yourself. It's $5 a month and you get access to over 100 real-time tutorials and monthly creative prompts. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, happy crafting. Bye.